Time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order. Ask everyone to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So at the opening of each meeting, we uh, have something called hearing of visitors. It allows the public an opportunity to address the school committee, superintendent, and mayor uh, for up to three minutes of comments. Uh, we did not have anyone sign in uh, to speak this evening, so no one is here to address the committee tonight. Um, I think that before we get into the... Um, I'll give everyone a chance to sit down. Before we get into the, uh, the business of tonight's meeting, it's a uh, very difficult meeting for us tonight because tonight is our first official meeting without Michael Healy. And uh, we're all very shocked and saddened to lose him a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, it's a very sad night for us to see his seat there and him not there. So we'd like to make a special presentation in honor of Mike to Mike's wife, Jackie, and his daughter, Catherine, if they would like to come down. I have to put my glasses on to read it. We're presenting this beautiful plaque tonight to, to Jackie and to Catherine. It states, in recognition of Michael P. Healy, Brockton School Committee, Ward 6, serving 2012 to 2014, for his dedicated service to the students and citizens of the Brockton Public Schools in the city of Brockton. And the plaque is insufficient, but it's our, uh, our presentation to the family. To say something, I'm sure the superintendent does too. Come on over here for a photo. You guys come on over now. Sure. Just have a few words about Mike. friend Mike will be dearly missed. I would describe Mike as a renaissance man, a talented craftsman with his hands, a bright student of history and politics, and a spiritual person who recognized the bigger pictures of life. Always open to an honest debate, that's for sure. He certainly provided us with a unique and at times a blunt approach to issues surrounding schools and this body. He was so generous with his time and efforts always willing to roll up his sleeves for the betterment of our school system and community, always willing to explain to our students the value of receiving an education. He spoke from the heart and from real life experience. I truly believe he felt students could find an easier way through education using the power of one's mind over brawn. As we all know, he loved providing students with opportunities to grow, whether it was through sports, education, or his unique and entertaining contest of wit, as we all saw on many occasions. He had a great sense of humor and a laugh, while at the same time he'd admit that he wasn't a saint. On a rare occasion, he could be somewhat of a scutch, but as I'd affectionately <laughs> say, he was our scutch. <laughs> However, we all know his efforts were always pure and genuine in the best interests of our students. A true testament of his success is the love he has for his daughters, Alana and Catherine. So proud was he of their hard work and accomplishments, glowing when he spoke of his girls, and knowing that he had a true partner in their success, and that of course would be Jackie. Our community will miss our friend, I'm going to miss my friend, his colorful personality, that's for sure. Um, the whispers and the notes he passed to me in these meetings, sometimes pretty funny. You guys didn't know what he was saying, but I did. I only hope that uh, he's found true and everlasting peace. God bless you, Michael. Thank you. And 
Um, we're also going to award. Tom, it's very hard to, to follow up on those words. So it's a heartfelt. Uh, one of the things that I would like to say is I go way back with, with Mike and the Healy family uh, before becoming superintendent uh, as director of community schools. And Mike was always the first one, like you said, to roll up his sleeves, whether it was a fundraiser for scholarships so that every student in the city had an opportunity for after school programs, for fun summer programs. He was there for Summerfest. He was there for so many of the initiatives through community schools. As superintendent, uh, he was always there to support me from the very beginning. Again, sometimes words of wisdom, sometimes words that push me to the edge. But every time, <laughs> certainly, had the best interest of our children in mind. And when you mention a Renaissance man, as I told Jackie, I'm going to disagree with you because the, one of the last things he said to me was, hey, you have a lot of suits. Did your husband let you buy those? And I just looked at them, and you know what? If I had had time before tonight, I would have run out to buy a brand new suit. So I'm going to miss, miss him greatly on behalf of all of us in the Brockton Public Schools. Well, I guess the, the business of the schools and the government goes on. Uh, at this time of the meeting, we have the consent agenda. This is the manner in which uh, the school committee is able to uh, deal with a number of uh, fairly routine matters as one block uh, to make the meeting more efficient. However, prior to adopting a consent agenda, individual members of the school committee may request that any individual item be taken out for separate consideration. So at this time, I'll entertain any motions to remove an item from the consent agenda. Mrs. Joyce. Item C, please. Okay, item C. Mr. Minichello. Um, item E, please. Okay, C and E. Anyone else? Okay, so at this time, I'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda accepting items C and E. Motion is made and properly seconded by Mr. Henningsen uh, to, um, to approve the consent agenda minus items C and E. All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, Mrs. Joyce, item C. Um, I just wanted to um, make public the fact that the Building Naming Subcommittee met on March 11th to review and discuss findings of the ad hoc committees that were appointed for the naming of three facilities. As a result of that, that meeting, the subcommittee is making a favorable recommendation of two of the three requests. Number one, naming the Davis School Library after Marianne Burke and naming the press box at Marciano Stadium after Peter Farley. A public hearing needs to be scheduled and will be scheduled. After that hearing, the full school committee will vote on these recommendations. We are looking and we will um, add this to other uh, business uh, to possibly have the um, public hearing scheduled prior to the next school committee meeting, which is on April 8th. That's the, that would be the next date available. So we can either schedule that now or we can uh, wait until other business. So the motion would be to approve the report of the subcommittee. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Passes unanimously. If I could just add one comment to that. Um, this is for folks that... Oh, that's right. Do we have a second? Okay. <laughs> second by Alicia. Approved unanimously. Um, this is the first time that we're utilizing a new policy that was developed by the school committee over the past year. It's ironic that we're doing it tonight because it's an issue that Michael did a lot of work on. 
with us and was very committed to. Um, but we've really established a much more formal <coughs> procedure now for twice a year considering suggestions to name buildings and facilities. And uh, so names were suggested. They've been vetted out by an ad hoc committee. They've now been to the naming subcommittee and will now go on for the public hearing. But this is our first time utilizing the, um, the new policy. And I think that we've got two outstanding candidates that had a lot of support okay. to um, have things named after them. So <clears throat> just want a little explanation as background. Going back to the agenda, Mr. <coughs> Minicello on item E. Um, yes, I always like to point out when someone's been generous to the school system and once again, someone has stepped up to the plate with um, respect to donating some pencils, erasers, and sharpeners to the um, fourth grade students taking MCAS, and that would be the Altrusa International uh, Company. I guess they used to do it to one school, the Brookfield, and this year they're they're very generous and they're providing it to the entire fourth grade. So I would just like to say on behalf of all of us, thank you very much. Your generosity is appreciated. A number of months ago, as you mentioned, I received a phone call from Glenna Riley, a longtime parent liaison at the Brookfield. And again, she shared with me how in the past uh, they had provided... Former school committee member. For, former school committee member uh, and Southeastern Regional School Committee member, I believe. I believe so. And uh, I'd like to invite Glenna down. Uh, I'd like to invite also Susanna Leslie down. And to thank them, uh, this week we started MCAS and all of our students uh, in the fourth grade did receive those items and we're very excited uh, to have I that for Glenna this time. Glenna has chosen to stay there. She's, for those of you who don't know her, she's in the last row there on the end. Would you like to address us from the microphone? Yes, or? Please, right there. Thank you. I want to thank you all for allowing me to come here this evening. I would like to especially thank Superintendent Kathy Smith, please, for allowing us to do this, as well as her Secretary Wanda and Elizabeth Barry for helping us make sure that all of the fourth graders get an MCAS bag. Altrusa is an international nonprofit volunteer service organization that strives to make our local communities better. Altrusans proudly give over a million hours of volunteering around the world each year. Actually, it was Altrusa International of Plymouth County that has given every single one of your fourth grade students, all 1,250 of them, this bag or a bag like this, which has a pencil, an eraser, and a pencil sharpener in it. They get them on the day that they do their MCAS. Every day the teacher gives it to them. And then when the MCAS is over, they get to take them home. And this year we decided, uh, after writing a grant to Altrusa International Foundation, located in Chicago, Illinois, to ask them for a grant. Now what the clubs usually do is they match the grant money that is given to them by International we were granted $750 from Altrusa International, um, which is really, was very exciting for us. And this is the way we decided we wanted to spend the money. So I'm going to leave you with one of these bags. And of course, Glenna had versed me and said, please, whatever you do, bring every one of the members of the school committee, one of your trifolds that tells who we are and what we do and I left them at home on my kitchen table, and I apologize for that. But I will perhaps mail a group of them uh, so that hopefully at your next meeting you'll be able to get them, and I would like to pass this around. I especially want to thank the school committee for allowing us into the schools in order to present these. Uh, I also had the emails from the women who had delivered the uh, MCAS bags to each school. Um, one of them got to watch a pep rally when she delivered the bags. Someone else got to go into some of the classrooms and see the kids, and their faces just light up. These pencils on them say, yes, we can, and we always tell the students when we get to speak with them that we've put magic in there so, so that they'll do really well on their uh, M MCAS tests. Uh, I appreciate you having us all here. I didn't know, I live in the town of Hanover, and I'm telling you I'm astounded <laughs> by the facility that you have here. 
And of course, I realize that you have over 17,000 students. You have your hands full. God bless you, and thank you so much again. Uh, this is being presented jointly by the superintendent and myself. It says it's a certificate of appreciation presented by the Brockton Public Schools to Altrusa International, Inc. of Plymouth County for its generous support of Brockton Public Schools students. Altrusa's donation of pencils, pencil sharpeners, and erasers provided every fourth grader in Brockton with tools to take the MCAS test and the knowledge that their community cares about them and wishes them great success. It's co-signed both by myself and the superintendent. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Whoop, let me take my glasses off. <laughs> couple of the schools and yesterday I was actually at the Kennedy School went into one of the fourth grade classes and they were so excited to tell me how well they had done on the long comp it was really heartwarming they had tried their best uh, so I'm sure that was very motivating for them to get the, the extra extra little specialties as they started their very special exam so thank you again okay so we actually have to approve that item so uh, motion has been made Properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. Anyone do that other presentation? With three of While we're doing presentations and giving out plaques, um, do you want to, I'll let you handle this one, Superintendent. This is yours, 3M Corporation donation. This evening we have uh, a donation from uh, the 3M uh, Corp. And this was uh, something that is being given to Brockton High School one hundred thousand dollars to actually bring our planetarium back online and I'd like to invite uh, Jonathan Shapiro our science department head at Brockton High School to to share with us some information about this donation and the use of the hundred thousand dollars thank you uh, we're very very excited about this project uh, 3M has been a great partner to us and I remember a couple of years ago a number of you and and we took a walk throughout the science facilities and I remember walking into the old welding lab which was vacant and I said you have to have the vision this is a biotech lab and that has happened uh, we opened it this year and we went into the planetarium and I showed you the capabilities of a 40 year old system and I handed you some iPads I said this is the 40 year old system this is what students have in their hands today we can do better than this. And as a result of the work that 3M has done, we can. And we'll be opening up the new planetarium next year. Um, we've, been, we've been looking at, at a variety of suppliers for planetariums in the last couple of weeks. And it is really exciting. We're so excited for this, both as an instructional tool, as well as a piece to help um, bolster the, the STEM culture in the town of Brockton. Uh, we can have community events, we can have the elementary schools visiting the high school again for the planetarium and really build excitement about the sciences. Um, one of the things that, that's so great about this is that it goes beyond the sciences and students can learn and the community can learn across disciplines through this capability. So I really look forward to welcoming you there in just a few months and prepare to, prepare to have your minds blown as one of the teachers who saw it the other day said, I thought I was walking into a planetarium and I felt like I was in an IMAX. So thank you so much to 3M. They've, they've been a, a, a great partner in education both last year. They, they donated $5,000 to us, um, which we used to buy digital probeware. And one of our students, uh, two of our students who were using those digital probes that 3M paid for um, they made it to the state science fair and they'll be competing there in May. So we're very excited. And just to add a couple of things to that, you mentioned again that it's not just benefiting our Brockton High School students. 
It's benefiting our younger students who will have an opportunity to come and see the planetarium again as they did many, many years ago. We'll certainly open it up to our community members. I'm told that there's a possibility that it's the online before Summerfest, which is in late August of 2014. So hopefully with the in-kind donation from the Brockton Public Schools, which is our new electrical, lighting, seats, carpet, you know, paint, et cetera, to bring this back online. And I have already had emails from you know, former teachers, former science teachers. They're already wondering about the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony coming up. So again, um, we uh, would like to honor 3M uh, with a plaque and to thank them for this very special donation. And so uh, we also want to mention that this is a, uh, a great partnership for our science department. Um, you know, from a public standpoint, we have many uh, uh, parents of students in the Brockton Public Schools who also work for the 3M uh, company over in Rockland. We have many uh, Brockton residents that uh, work there, so we're, I'm very grateful to 3M for making the donation. I think as Mr. Shapiro mentioned, we've been looking at that planetarium for a couple of years, really wanting to get it back online, but just not being able to find the money in the budget to do it. And, uh, and I think that we realized that it was going to take some help from a grant order to get it done. And uh, Mr. Shapiro, did, you did, did a great job in, in acquiring the funds. And I just want to personally thank the 3M Corp for stepping up and creating this great opportunity for the, uh, the students in the Brockton Public Schools. And we're very appreciative, and I think the superintendent has a presentation for, uh, for the representatives of 3M. Some are represented here today. Yeah, let's, let's get some more people. Yeah, yeah, we'll squeeze everybody in. We are very proud and very excited to have the opportunity to uh, support uh, the uh, Brockton schools with respect to $100,000 grant towards your renovation of your sanitarium. Uh, we also have some additional news for you. Uh, Brockton schools was also nominated to receive a pallet full of 3M products free of charge. Wow. And so, um, Jonathan, you can expect to get an email probably in the next couple of weeks or so uh, on that. And I think you'll be very pleased with the type of um, uh, products that you will receive. That so again, Thank you. on behalf of all of us at 3M, we're very happy to to donate $100,000 to the Rockland School. Oops, I would also like to invite State Representative Claire Cronin here with us tonight. So let's bring Representative Cronin in also to uh, help us accept the check. Claire, come on again. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Please squeeze it. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you at the ribbon cutting ceremony. Yes, now that is a condition. You got to invite us mm -hmm. back. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> well, again, on behalf of the Brockton Public Schools, thank you for partnering with us uh, for something so important to our students, our families, and uh, to continue to support education in the city of Brockton. And thank you. On behalf thank of you. all of three in Rockland, again, we say thank you very much. And Great. to you, I guess, I, who gets the real check? Wow. <laughs> I think the superintendent's in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will give, give it to my deputy superintendent. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Petronio is with us tonight. to save this tonight. one, too? Okay. Like that. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure. Mr. Shapiro, I think you should have that. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay with you. Yeah. to accept yeah. the donation. I guess we find out who's really in charge when we see who ends up with the real check. Yeah. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. So I think uh, at this uh, at this time uh, I'll turn the platform over uh, to the superintendent for the superintendent's report on teaching and learning. Okay. And I'd like to begin by uh, inviting uh, Jessica to share with us, you know, what's happening. She's our student representative, and each school committee meeting, Jessica updates us on what's happening at Brockton High School. Well, last meeting, I know I talked about how we are just about to take ELA MCAS as sophomores, and well, it's over. And I felt, I know I felt very prepared. I felt like a machine. I just kept writing. It was great. So um, now we're looking forward to our math MCAS in May and our science MCAS in June. So now, exciting here. Get it over with. And okay, um, drama club state competition for their competition piece, um, Wiley and the Hairy Man is this week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They will be competing first at the John Hancock Center. So I know everyone in drama is very excited for that. It's a big accomplishment. Um, next, our spring concert is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Tickets are already on sale in the main office, and they are $3 a piece. So it's going to be a great performance. Let's go. Um, all right, and April 3rd, there is an in-service, so student dismissal will be at 11. <laughs> yeah. And that's what's happening at Brockton High. And as Jessica shared with you, uh, our students have finished taking uh, their MCAS, our 10th graders. They can breathe a sigh of relief. I also want to share uh, with the community that the park testing has begun uh, in Brockton. I know there's been a lot of publicity about it. It is a field testing. It is just that. Uh, they are looking at... Uh, this type of uh, high-stakes test uh, to make a decision in the future, whether we will go with PAC or MCAS. So we'll be able to share with you when all of that is done. I talked to Dr. Cancel today. We're going to be talking about debriefing as we continue to go through this, and we'll be able to report back to you. Okay, Jessica, thank you very much. Next, I'd like to talk to you um, again. When I have come here, I've talked to you about our organizational chart. And when I was last here, I introduced you um, the past couple of months to our two new deputy superintendents. And it's really putting the pieces together and enabling us to be a district, again, <clears throat> supporting 17,000 students. So I am pleased this evening to talk about a couple of um, new appointments or upgrades in position. And the first one I'd like to talk to you about is uh, Dr. Ethan Cancel, who is our new executive director of accountability, planning, and instructional technology. Dr. Cancel has been with us since um, 2006, eight years. Uh, he has overseen accountability, uh, performance uh, data in the district. He's worked very closely with our uh, Huntington School in their turnaround plan. He's worked closely with East Middle School in their redesign plan. He is an expert grant writer in the district. Ethan is our point person right now for Park, although he probably won't admit that to you. He's been working with the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education very closely. He was our point person when we recently had our district review, and I'm very excited to introduce him to you tonight and uh, to congratulate him on his new position on, again, our executive team. So, Dr. Cancel, please come down. and. Thank you very much. I'm uh, really thrilled to be here. I want to thank you all. I want to thank Superintendent Kathleen Smith, the entire school committee, for providing me with what really is a fabulous opportunity. Um, although I don't want to admit any part in PARC, um, we really are in a time where there's more and more data that's being used to make our schools better, which is very important to me. And we have an opportunity to use technology and data to work closely with Liz's Teaching and Learning Office and with our uh, new Executive Director of Teaching and Learning. It's going to be a really, really um, great opportunity. Anyone who knows me knows that I like to quote the research. And uh, it's, it's not often that education research is pretty clear about something. But peer groups really matter in education. That's, that's been a finding since the Coleman Report of the 60s. It keeps coming up and up and up. And I have to tell you, my mom was right. Who you hang around with really matters. I'm hanging around with a fabulous team. 
starting with Kathy, Mike, Liz, Sal, I mean, Kathy Moran, Jocelyn, soon to be June, Cliff Murray. It's really a fabulous team, and I think we're going to do fantastic things. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I can't wait to be in front of you again presenting some data. And uh, <laughs> you can already wait. Well, I, I did have a uh, six-page uh, CV, which Kathy said, your three-page resume, and I said, what happened to the other three pages? So, but thank you very much. I also want to acknowledge, congratulations, Dr. Cancel. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, Ethan's uh, wife, Darlene, is here, and you hear his son, Zach, in the background, <laughs> congratulating his dad on his new appointment. Ethan, congratulations on your um, appointment. I think we all can agree that um, we always look forward to your dry sense of humor during those presentations. Um, you never let us down. But what I truly have appreciated over the years listening to your presentations is that you tell it the way it is. I mean, you lay it out there whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, you don't sugarcoat it. I mean, you tell us what areas we need uh, to take a look at. We, you tell us, you know, where there's pluses, where there are minuses, and, and you just present it in an honest way. And, and I think that's what all of us on the school committee appreciate about you, um, because it helps us to become a better system. Um, you know, just patting people on the back and not showing where, you know, some of the, the flaws are doesn't do us any good. Um, and I, I, again, just want to appreciate, uh, tell you how much I appreciate that because, you know, your honesty helps us all do a better job. So keep up the good work and, um, you know, point out those flaws and also, also obviously pat us on the back where we need to be. But <laughs> thank you and uh, congratulations. And it sounds like you have your biggest <laughs> fan back there. So. <laughs> he just said, he said it all. Daddy, <laughs> daddy. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, uh, our next appointment, again, and you see us coming full circle here, um, we have, because of the uh, promotion of Liz Barry as our new Deputy Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, uh, her position was left open, our Executive Director of Pre-K-5. And I'm very excited to share with you tonight the appointment of our Principal at the Huntington School, June Sabe, who will become our new Executive Director of um, Pre-K-5, uh, Teaching and Learning, and I have to tell you again, this is a little bit more personal in that I go way back with June, many of you know that. Uh, June was a former neighbor, a uh, very young mom in the neighborhood, and loved coming over and talking to both Jerry and I, who at the time were teachers in the Brockton Public School, all about teaching. She went back to school with very young kids, uh, ended up graduating Bridgewater State University, summa cum laude. She uh, began teaching with, when I look at the teaching group that she taught with at the Arnon School, which is presently your Keith Center, you had, there were fifth grade teachers, there was Carol McGrath, there was June Saber, there was Heather Ronan, there was Diane Lynch. That was really a high powered group and they dealt with some of the most difficult students in Brockton. Never gave up, excellent teachers, all of them are administrators in the Brockton Public School to this day. June went on to become what was called MCAS manager in the district where she oversaw the academic support for students all over the district from our youngest students all the way through high school. She very quickly became involved uh, actually with uh, Dr. Moran. Dr. Moran was principal at the Huntington. June was one of the first associate principals. They worked very closely together and began the turnaround process at that school. When Kathy left, I believe, to become principal at the Franklin, June continued as principal of the Huntington School and continued to, to bring wonderful initiatives to the, Hun to the Huntington School. It became not just a, a turnaround effort. Many of the things that you see there to this day are June's vision, and it's a constant vision. If you've worked with June, and I know all of you had, every time you see her, there's something new, there's a better way to do something, there's more professional development, there's more partnerships, there's uniforms for the kids, there's STEM laboratories. It's, it's very exciting when you have a principal like that that is willing to have a vision for our children, for our schools. 
So to have her come on board at this point to work so, so closely um, with Dr. Murray, uh, with Liz Barry, and to make sure that our principals are supported to make sure that they have those visions, those efforts, and will continue the progress that we're certainly making at the Huntington School. So I'd like to invite June down to, uh, to share with us some of her thoughts about her new position, and I would like to congratulate her. It's going to be hard for me to follow up on Kathy. Thank you. Um, I have to say I'm more nervous about speaking in front of my 15-year-old son than I think I am my new position. So I hope he's going to be nice to me. So good evening. I'm honored to be sitting here in this seat as your new Executive Director of Elementary Education. I'm so proud of the career I've had in the Brockton Public Schools. And I have to say I attribute my success to the fact that I've had the opportunity to work in what I consider to be the best urban system in the state. Systems are only as good as its people and I have to say I have worked from and I've learned from the very best. As you sit there beside Superintendent Smith, I have to say she was my abs absolutely my mentor my entire career and as she'll tell you I've been a little bit mad at her because I haven't been able to get a hold of her since she took the new position as superintendent. But let me also say that I have to thank each of you on the school committee. For the past five years, you have consistently supported the work that we have done at the Huntington School. And each of you has had a sig significant role in our success. We've appreciated all, of all you have done to allow us to make the necessary changes that have led to true school turnaround. I did want to specifically mention Michael Healy and the fact that he took such an active role when we were writing the Expanded Learning Time Grant. He put in so much time and energy and he did everything he could, including visiting the State House to help us win that grant award. And I know how proud he was of the school and his contribution to supporting it. And we'll always be grateful to him for that work. So this is really truly bittersweet for me because I am so proud of the work that we've done at the Huntington School. I've had the, the opportunity to work with an exceptional group of professionals who are willing to do whatever was needed to improve conditions for our students. I will always hold them in such high regard and will be grateful for the time I spent there as principal. And it is absolutely because of my experiences as principal of the Huntington School that I feel so prepared for this role. Now it's my hope that as a district we're able to analyze some of the successful professional practices that exist at the Huntington and other city schools and share those practices with each other. In my role as executive director, you can be confident that I work will work closely with all members of the school community to find creative and proven methods for increasing student achievement at all of our elementary schools. I'm fortunate that I've worked alongside principals with whom I consider to be exceptional and talented colleagues and that these existing as I work through these existing relationships, we will work together to strive to take on the challenges and meet the expectations for excellence in our schools. I'm so grateful to Superintendent Smith and the members of her executive team for placing their trust in me and offering me the opportun opportunity to join their... I really am nervous in front of my son, isn't that terrible? <laughs> <laughs> he is. It's exciting to be joining the team at a time where the superintendent is working so strategically to set a clear direction for excellence for the Brockton Public Schools. I'd like to thank the members of my faculty because I see that they're here tonight and I was especially surprised to see Dr. Lisa Badalino from Bridgewater State University. Again, another person who has mentored me over the past two years. And I have to say, I'd like to thank my soon-to-be this is going to be tricky for me to say, let's try this. My soon-to-be husband, Mark, <laughs> for being such a great listener and for doing his best to not only offer me advice when he knows I'm ready, when, for, offer, for only offering me advice when he knows I'm actually ready to listen to it. And finally, <laughs> yes, I do listen, it just takes a little while. And finally, I'd like to thank my son, Mark, who asked me not to mention him, and now I've done it four times, for understanding as best he can my late nights. And I'd really like to thank him for being such a great kid and not complaining too much about my cooking. 
I did stop on the way here this evening to get them Taco Bell, so that earned me some points. So thank you again. I'm very excited to be here. I was just informed that June will be receiving a Distinguished Service Award during the commencement ceremony at Bridgewater State University this spring and an honorary doctorate degree, I believe. So we are very, very proud of June receiving this honor. So thank you so much. So thank you. Mr. Minichelli. I would always tease Mrs. Sava because, as she mentioned, five years ago is when the turnaround process at the Huntington started. And um, I would say to her over the years, do we have to listen to another Huntington presentation? <laughs> because it was like, okay, we're doing this now, and we're doing that now, and then we're doing this now, and then we're doing that now. And I was only kidding her, but because what she would do over there is really out of the box um, administration. But the great thing about what she did was that she was very collaborative with her staff and with the union working together, making things work because what went on there and what goes on there is really out of the box thinking. It doesn't happen in every other school in this district. And five years ago, um, Mrs. Joyce will remember, um, Superintendent Nimbercow was the superintendent of schools when all this sort of started. And then Matt Malone came on board and we, um, we're talking about funding and there was so much energy over at the Huntington about putting this plan together and they put a plan together together basically you know with staff working together and um, and then we got hit Mrs. Joyce will remember this we got hit with a horrible year um, and Bill you were on the committee then yeah, Sophie and Mr. Bath. yeah Mr. Bath and we got hit with a horrible year and the deck got reshuffled because of the um, seniority of teachers um, and potential layoffs. People got transferred to different schools. She had new personnel at the Huntington. But again, bringing people together, working together with staff, and, and doing a great job over there. I mean, um, really putting the students first, looking for grants. Um, you know, you help bring grants into that school for the extended learning time, for the uh, enrichment programs. I mean, this really is uh, an example of I'll say it again, out of the box, you know, administration and working together with your staff for the benefit of those kids. And, you know, when I go over that school, those kids really are the best dressed kids in the school with the uniforms. I, I mean, I, I love it. I think it's such a neat school. Um, the kids all seem happy and nice and, ha and they just look great. I always compliment them. You know, you guys are the best looking kids in the school district. You know, you look great. But again, buy-in from the community. Um, she brought, I mean, I'm going on and on, but I mean, she brought um, forth one of the, you know, parents reading programs, learning English. Um, I mean, there was so much going on there. Some people, you know, some people are nine to five people. That's not you, June, you know? And your work has been recognized and noted by many of us on this committee. And, you know, uh, I hope that um, you know you're going to bring that energy. I'm sure you will to the executive team, and you know certainly share with many of your peers who are doing good work in the schools. You know some of the ideas and processes that you've implemented. But um, you know I, I, I think this is going to be a great move. I, I think there are going to be big shoes to fill at that school. So you better be careful with Superintendent Smith, the, the new principal in that school, because we don't want to go backwards. If you do, I'm going to hold you personally responsible for <laughs> pulling her out of that school, <laughs> Superintendent Smith. So. Well, as, as Dr. Murray is anchoring west until the end of the year, June will anchor the Huntington School. Um, she will be spending quite a bit of time at Central, and I'm so glad to hear you say that she was not a 9-to-5 person. So when she's trying to reach me on the weekends, maybe she can join me a few of these times. <laughs> really? So we'll, we'll make sure of that. Well, congratulations, Mrs. Sava. You know, very deservedly so. I'd like to add a brief comment to Thomas, but seeing as he went on so long, I'll try to be brief. Um, but I, I do remember that year very clearly. That was my first year in the school committee, and it was a terrible budget year. And for Patty and Richard, myself and Tom and the others that were there, 
it was a very tough decision to allocate extra money to Huntington when we were making cuts elsewhere. Um, but I think we did it because uh, June and her staff came in and, and just sold us on the fact that they were on to doing something special and you could see that June had complete buy-in from her staff and that the, the redesign was created by a team, not by an individual. And so I, mean, I think we rolled the dice a little bit that year and, and we funded it at a time that, that it wasn't easy to fund. And I got to tell you, we've gotten great return on our investment over the last few years. So I love the Huntington also. My personal connection to the Huntington is that my daughter Delaney attended kindergarten there and then as a senior had the opportunity to go back 12 years later and tutor students at, at the Huntington. And it was very important to her and she loved the fact that she could go back and give something back to her old school, but also she loved the environment working with the Bridgewater State students and the teachers and the leadership there. And it was a great experience for her 12 years later to get a chance to come back. So I also add my congratulations uh, to Ms. Saber and uh, I'm sure she's gonna do uh, just an incredible job in the new role. Okay. Set. Yep. And last but not least, uh, Jocelyn Meek, our communications uh, officer, uh, has been upgraded to our district communications officer. And a number of things, you mentioned the cuts back in 2009, and the school committee was basically able to, to salvage that job. Um, Jocelyn took on at that time not only being our communications officer, she became our webmaster, and, and so many more things to all of us in the district to make sure that the good news is out there to make sure that, that the events that are happening, that, that people can take part in them. She brings many groups together to share the good news. One of the things that became very clear to me as soon as I came on board, when I was out there during the listening tours, I heard it all over about making sure that everybody was able to be part of the Brockton Public Schools. We're looking at our large bilingual population. I'm looking to place in that community uh, communications department uh, a bilingual cultural proficiency support to our communications office. We're looking to bring on um, a web content manager to support the work that Jocelyn is doing being kind of a, a one-man show in the communications office. We're presently working with Mayor Carpenter in City Hall and we'll continue to, to work across the street and, and make sure that we're able to get the message out to all of our community members in the Brockton community. So I want to thank Jocelyn. I look forward to, to building that department and, and making sure that the good news about the Brockton Public Schools is getting out to all parents and that all parents feel part of the Brockton Public Schools. Jocelyn, did you want to, did you want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard for the communications person not to have something to say. <laughs> not to communicate. <laughs> I guess I can guess, um, right? Um, I started in this job 12 years ago, and it was very hard to leave reporting because I always felt so fulfilled by it um, and have come to the Brockton Public Schools and found that every day was different, and I have always believed in what we do here. Um, I have seen so many wonderful stories of things that we were able to share and the, the behind the scenes stories of the work that the staff does very quietly that they don't want to publicize but that are, is very touching. My husband and I moved here. We're raising three children here. I believe in these schools. I'm happy to be part of them, not just as someone who works here but as a member of my PAC, you know, my church. I just, I think that this is a really wonderful city and I'm happy to share this news as someone who's experiencing it firsthand. Well, Jocelyn, uh, I met when I first came on the school committee, and um, you know, you mentioned that times and budgets were tough back then, and um, we are a, s a school system of 17,000 kids, and communication is huge with respect to notifying parents and keeping people in the loop on all the issues going on, and uh, I think Jocelyn's strength is that she is part of our community, and is, she's become a fabric of the community. She's at many, I, I see her at all sorts of events, um, attending you know, in her capacity for the Brockton Public Schools, but then also in her capacity as a parent and, and a community member. Um, she's been extremely thoughtful. I see her firsthand with people um, in terms of the way she handles certain situations. She's 
you know, done a great job since I've been here. Um, I think that uh, she brings a lot to the position and, you know, look forward to working with you, you know, in the future. But, um, you know, uh, her children are just beautiful. We saw a presentation with them um, a couple, a few, well, three weeks ago now, I would say. Um, and they were <laughs> performing uh, the functions of a program over at the library, um, Footsteps to Brilliance. And, um, I mean, her, her daughters are just adorable. And you just can't say enough about, you know, her raising her family here in Brockton and being part of this school system and, and, and community. She has a commitment to us all. And, um, again, she does a great job. So congratulations, Jocelyn. I had a brief comment too. I just, it's funny, my transition the last couple of months from sitting in Mr. Sullivan's seat and now moving over here, um, that how important this, the image of the schools is to the image of the city and the community. And as we try to, um, you know, redevelop the economy in the city and, and get the city back on track, um, I've learned very quickly how important it is people's perception of your school system. and we do have a great school system and I like to, I try not to use the word urban because I just think we have a great school system, period. And, uh, but the communication piece is just so important to us because I think sometimes we don't try hard enough to spread the good news to people outside the families of the 17,000 students as to the great things that go on in the Brockton schools every day and the great successes that happen within the Brockton schools every day and the great young people that we turn out every year. And, you know, when I, I recently was at something, someone made a comment about not wanting to send their kids to Brockton schools, which caused me to have a little <coughs> discourse, for lack of a better word, with them. And uh, it it's, it's drives me crazy when I hear something like that because it's ignorance on people's part who don't really know what great schools we have. So I just think it's this, this new venture with the communication office, as important it is to the families of the students, uh, for myself as mayor, it's also critically important, I think, to everyone who lives in the city. As we change the perception of Brockton, the school system is a big part of that positive change in the perception of the city. So, Jocelyn, I'm looking forward to working with you also. And next item is the uh, district capacity project update, um, specifically, again, for our new members on the school committee. This is a project when I was elected as superintendent uh, just over a year ago. It was one of the first projects I became involved in through the Mass Educational Partnership. Uh, this involves a collaboration uh, not only with our school committee, Mr. Minicello <coughs> is a representative, our union, uh, our union president, Kim Gibson, um, Yolanda, uh, I'm trying to think of her married name, DeFalco. DeFalco. <laughs> uh, we have. Uh, Kelly Jones again from Central Office and, and Dr. Kathleen Moran, Elizabeth Barry and Mike Thomas also serve on this committee and would like to give you an update about our um, possibility of creating an innovation school, a charter school for a dual language program uh, in our school district. Good evening everyone. Nice to see you all. For those of you who don't know me, I am Kim Gibson, BEA President. Uh, Kelly Jones is next to me and you all know Kathy Moran. So this is really a, an update and um, to bring on board the new members just so you know what we've been working on. So we are members of the District Capacity Project. We started this back in 2012 under um, Superintendent Malone and we are eight, one of eight districts in the state that are working collaboratively. It has union management, it's got school committee members, the superintendent, teachers and administrators as, uh, Dr. as Superintendent Smith said. So we have been working together for a little over two years. It says we started in November 2012, but we actually had something in the spring. So we've been working together um, to develop a new school for the city of Brockton because we do believe that we are leaders in education across the state and we would like to be the role model for other districts. So Superintendent Smith did let you know who's on the committee. Um, I think that everyone was mentioned. Ellen Kelly may have been left off our BEA secretary, but one person who's key to our team would be Ray Shirtliff. He's our district capacity project facilitator and he keeps us focused. We meet um, every month and at those meetings he de never lets us get off track. If we do, he always like redirects us. And I think all of us do laugh because, you know, we like to talk about how our day has been and he's like, nope, we, get, we need to focus on the project, which is what we need because it is a very ambitious project. Um, one of the reasons we started this was because of the, the Sabbath Charter School that was trying to come into Brockton. 
Our rationale in developing this type of school is because currently our population has shifted. We have approximately one quarter of the students that are English language learners. As of March 21st, 2014, you have 3,589 students who are classified as limited English proficient and 752 are classified as formally lim limited English proficient. The Spanish dual language program at the Methodist George School has been extremely popular with over 100 native English speaking kindergartners on the waiting list every year. There is a significant amount of research about the high academic achievement of stu students in these, these programs both for English language learners and um, the native speakers. So we really want to capitalize on that and get our students achieving at a higher rate. We do have a draft mission statement and you have it in front of you. <laughs> I don't need to read this to you. But we basically are, are really trying to create something unique here in Brockton to really address the population that we service nowadays. So we've done some surveys which Kelly Jones will actually review some of the results from that at this point. So good evening everyone. Uh, back in November um, we presented the results of the survey so we're just going to kind of quickly go over what we did earlier in the fall. We drafted a survey and we conducted those surveys at all of the open houses in Brockton, the Title I breakfast, the Parent Academy events. We had a staff survey for all um, personnel in the Brockton Public Schools and we posted it on the website so that, that um, community members could uh, voice their interests or their perceptions about this uh, foreign language immersion programs in Brockton. So we had over, t uh, we had over 2,000, 2,509 total responses. Of those responses, uh, 2,300 were in English, 78 were in Portuguese, 43 were in Spanish, and 17 were in French. And out of those um, completed responses, we were able to um, glean some interesting data about interest in language instruction in Brockton. One of the things that we really learned from the um, survey is that there are many, many languages that are spoken in the home. Most of the languages are, uh, most of the homes have more than one language that are spoken in that. So we, we have rich diversity of language use here in Brockton that we can capitalize in an asset way. Um, by far, we had the most have some English in the, in the home, but we had 211 having um, Cape Verdean, with 313 indicated they spoke Spanish. We had 85 with Portuguese, um, and 84 identified French. Um, so, and uh, you notice we had lots of other languages, 23 other languages were, were mentioned, among them all the way from Albanian to down to Zulu. <coughs> So we posed the question of, of if a dual language program were available to their child, would they enroll in it? And overwhelmingly, the, the respondents said yes, they would enroll their child um, in, the, in a program, 1,502, while only 269 said no, 550 said maybe, and 205 said not applicable because they didn't have children in the Brockton Public Schools. So we, we asked them about some, some of their thoughts about Brockton Public Schools and learning languages in Brockton Public Schools. And it, it, was, a, it was a wonderful um, way to see uh, parent and community commitment to uh, the system and to the, the students that we serve. And these are just a sample of it. Overwhelmingly, uh, the comments showed that uh, learning dual languages is an important skill in the 21st century and that um, we have such a wonderful two-way programming in existing at any way that we could um, capitalize on the languages of our community and add to the programs that are available uh, to students would be, would be valuable and would be um, appreciated. So now I'm going to pass it over to Kathy. Thank you. So we were fortunate enough to be able to represent um, the DCP at the NABE conference, which is the National Association for Bilingual Education, um, just this past month. And that allowed us to get a, a not only a, a perspective from across the country, but also to take a look at some of the presenters that had shared ideas with best pr about bre best practices um, with the development of a dual lang language program and also sharing ideas on how to recruit and retain um, quality, high quality staff members for these programs. 
Um, one of the other ideas that came up, which has been an issue for our group, was um, the idea of digital resources for the curriculum. We were very concerned about where we would get the material for this, and um, thankfully, as part of that conference, we were able to tap into some resources and get some um, ideas on how we might be able to do that in the future. Um, based on the work that we've been doing over the past, we have um, revised our timeline since the last time we saw you. Um, a couple of the highlights there, um, in our, at our next meeting next month, we will be taking a look at identifying a program model so that we can actually um, determine which one would best benefit our student population. Um, another idea that we have uh, later on would be that we will be having community forums in order to share specific information about programs and answer any questions um, before the registration and lottery, which we would have scheduled um, for the fall. And then finally, um, the planning process, preparing for the opening of um, the school in September 2015. Um, as you can see, we would, um, the steps that we would take to not only inform the community, but also to have the necessary materials and resources um, in order to open up the classes in September of 2015. As we've gone through this process, there are a couple of challenges that we've looked at in terms of the implementation. One that we're looking at across the district is always space, um, where this program would be housed. And again, that's something that we're looking at with all programs across the district. Um, we're always looking into staffing to ensure that we have high quality staff members who are properly licensed and who can provide the best quality instruction for the students in this type of program. And also, again, the curriculum development, um, which would be something that we'd be working with, we'd be tapping into the resources we have in the district of the current um, bilingual education um, department and also our two-way bilingual program to make sure that we are developing a curriculum that will meet the needs of our, our students here in the, in the city. Um, other than that, we just wanted to, again, we wanted to give you um, an update on where we are, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer those. I want to make it clear that, you know, a lot of what's being done is naturally subject to our funding, you know, what our budgets look like, um, and um, at a point where we have a proposal, we certainly want the rest of the school committee to weigh in and see if they feel that it is something that the body can support not something that can be implemented nor should it without a full discussion by this whole body, um, especially in light of, you know, budgetary resources and um, capacity and, and rolling out a program that we can do well. Um, it's definitely a, um, a uh, initiative that uh, is something that has to be done um, well thought out. I mean, you can't implement something like this and do it, you know, half, you know, halfway. It's got to be all the way in when we decide which program or programs we're going to implement, that we have the capacity to do it, we have the full support of all the committee, and we have the appropriate funding. So, um, again, we're putting together something, but you all will be included in the discussion when we have something solid to present. So it, it's been a lot of, you know, brainstorming and ideas and research, um, but and nothing happens without this body being fully um, vested in it. So. Yep, Mrs. Joyce. Uh, thank you for the update. Uh, it's, it's obvious that you've been working very diligently and very hard on this, and you've made great, great progress. Um, one of the questions I have is when the time comes that you're formulating this presentation, uh, this um, vision, and, and what it's going to look like, um, are you looking at options, more than one option? I know that you had said maybe uh, a school freestanding school or a charter school, Kathy, I think you had mentioned that option, or are you looking at possibly incorporating this program within our existing school structure? Is that something that's a little bit down the road? 
I think one of the things that we're doing when we keep talking about a facility master plan, it's not just about the buildings itself. It's also taking a look at, you know, the options that we offer mm -hmm. to our students in the Brockton Public Schools. You know, you've done an excellent job years ago at the Gilmore creating an IV model, which is now our Plouffe Academy. Um, you know, we talk about STEM initiatives. You'll soon hear me talk a little bit about East Middle School and some options. So I think as part of our facility master plan, it gives the community an opportunity to, again, have choices for our family. Mm -hmm. You know, this has been one of those popular choices that has shown to uh, decrease, uh, you know, the gap in, in achievement among students. Uh, it positions our students well in the future learning for acceptances into college. The business community is wrapping its arms around <laughs> dual uh, language programs. So this would be another one of those choices, you know, for our students in Brockton. I think our ideas as we go forward, it could be housed in an existing school. It doesn't mean that the whole school will begin as a dual language program. It could be part of the school at the time, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, where we have seats. But it allows us to continue to have the discussion and to move forward uh, with our planning with the district capacity project. At what, at what point during this process do you expect to have some idea as to the numbers of students that would be interested in, in actually um, enrolling in this type of program? Because I think that will be where we put it or how we implement it will be determined by the, the number of students we'll be servicing. Obviously the, the survey data, it was a hypothetical situation yeah. when we asked people if they would be interested in signing up. Um, but in the spring of next year would be when we would, ha we would talk about a lottery um, and registration and the community forums to really say, we, we heard your, that you had interest in this, but now it's actually going to happen so that right. we would be able to actually have people um, register for that. And uh, assuming that there would be a great deal of interest, we would have the lottery system like we do now for mm -hmm. the... Um, the Once two we determine program. how many students we can service and what our budget constraints possibly could be. Yes. But when you bring up one of the, the um, challenges is space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, although we are servicing the same number of students, Correct. it's just mm -hmm. in a different type of program. Right. You know, so we're teaching those students anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just a different, like we say with the IB program. You know, these children have a seat anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just how are we teaching them and what opportunities are we giving them. Yes. So thanks again for the update. Thanks again thanks. for your hard work. Thanks. Anyone else? No? Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you heard me mention our um, East Middle School, which um, you certainly know the history of East Middle School. A number of years ago, they had a grant for uh, a redesign at East. And I have to tell you, I keep talking about this, but one of the, my visit to Long Beach, California this past fall, and I went into a middle school, and it, w it was the story, and it reminded me of East Middle School. They talked about a school that was highly uh, subscribed to at one point in Long Beach. Uh, very soon they closed, um, certainly the, the, I think it was a naval community, uh, and when that closed down, it became a school that wasn't selected. And what they did, it was, um, they made, it was called the Marshall School in Long Beach. They made it the Marshall Arts Middle School Academy. And by focusing on the arts, it's now a school that is highly subscribed to. It's really changed that whole neighborhood. It's made it, uh, again, a choice for people in Long Beach. When I left there, I came back excited because I was talking to uh, Dr. Silva and her staff, and we were, again, talking about the redesign grant. But at the same time, we are looking to make sure that that has its own identity, that it's a place where a magnet school, where people would want to go to. And you look here at Brockton High School, you look at the arts and what it has become here, whether it's drama, whether it's dance, whether it's you know, all the fine arts that you have in this very place that we're sitting. And to have a feeder school for something like that for Brockton High was something very desirable. Before we do this, I'm bringing it to the school committee's attention because right now, Dr. Silva is working with um, Kim Gibson, the BEA. We're starting to share this information with the staff at East Middle School. This is not something that happens overnight. This is something that is well planned. We would have a timeline. We'd start to, again, as part of our facility master plan, talk about this being another choice and another option for our parents of middle schoolers in the Brockton Public Schools. So we're really excited, and, and one of the comments or talking points the purpose of an arts academy is to integrate content and skill from the arts, whether it's dance, music, theater, and visual arts, with other core subjects. The idea here is to create a form of arts integration 
that will incorporate a seamless blending of content and skills between an art form and a co-curricular subject. So I just wanted to, again, bring it to your attention that this is something that we are presently working on. We will get to a point where I will ask Dr. Silva and her staff and her team to come and present to us um, what is happening at the school. Any questions? Any questions for the superintendent on East? we're exploring. I mean, nothing stays stagnant here in the Brockton Public Schools. I mean, we're talking about, um, you know, adding a dual language possibly. We're talking about, you know, an arts school. I mean, you hear about these things in like places like New York City, you know, or Boston. I mean, so, you know, it's great that we are thinking in different ways, different ways to get kids excited about learning, um, things change. I mean, you know, technology changes. Things are so different than when we sat here in Brockton High. And so it's just great to see that people in our system are thinking in unique ways to get kids interested, to engage kids. <coughs> um, so I commend you and look forward to, you know, that presentation by East. Um, it's a school that I went to as a kid, East Junior High, not East Middle School, East Junior High. Um, it's a great building. I, I've been in there and, um, you know, it's well done. I mean, there's been a lot of work in that building. There's a nice computer lab where Mr. Bertrand used to teach me shop. No longer things are changing. You know, we used to learn wood shop. It's, it's just, you know, nothing is stagnant and it's good to see that we're on the cutting edge and continuing to meet the new challenges to, of today. And I agree with you, Mr. Minicello. East Middle School, at the time East Junior High, was very special to me. I taught there. Please don't tell me I taught there when you were a student there, but I'm going to bet that's a possibility. <laughs> um, but it, it is a special place, and, and this is really a collaborative effort. Uh, Dr. Cliff Murray will be working very closely with Dr. Silva. Um, Laurie Silva, who is your liaison to that school as one of the, the superintendent focus schools. We've had the good fortune of having, uh, you know, Richard Bath, who again works at a college level at LaSalle College in this very area, you know, working on Saturdays. I've joined them a few times and, and again being creative and having a vision and looking forward to working very closely with Kim Gibson and our teachers because this can't just be driven by, you know, a group at central office. It has to be supported by staff. Um, it has to be something, again, that we're all excited about moving forward. So we will report back to you. As I said, I just wanted you, you know, to make sure that you heard that this was happening at East Middle School. It's very exciting. Okay. You sit with okay. That. All right. Next item is items to refer to subcommittee. At this time, any members of the committee can uh, put items on the table to uh, refer to one of our subcommittees. One of the, um, well, can I bring up my yes, uh, yep. the issue we talked about? So uh, I'm going to ask uh, if the committee would refer to the policy subcommittee um, reviewing and establishing a policy regarding maximum age of students in middle schools. I think that uh, in the reporting of a recent incident for myself, finding out that we had a 16 and a half year old student in a K through 8 school, um, in my mind, my personal opinion, not the opinion of the committee, uh, is unacceptable and I think that it's something that requires an immediate look by this uh, committee to determine uh, if we should have programs and identifiers in place and in, you know, to, to not have students over a certain age in the mainstream. There may be exceptions for students that are receiving special ed services particularly in a substantially separate setting but I think those are the things we need to vet out but having a um, a 16-year-old student in a K-8 through school I don't think should happen and I, I would ask the committee to take a look at establishing maximum age alternative programs but I would ask that we look at this um, promptly so that there can be a, a policy in place before students are being placed for the next academic year. Mr. Minichello. Go beyond that. Um, just because it happened at a middle school there could be kids at an elementary school that are much too old to be at an elementary school. There could be kids at the high school that are just much too old to be at in Brockton High. So 
I think we look at the middle school, but we also look at each, each levels of grade level here in the Brockton Public Schools yeah, I, and determine what parameters there should be at the different levels. I, I um, think, Mr. Mitchell, a couple of years ago we did establish a policy regarding the high school. Yeah. I know there was discussion on it. Yeah, but I um, believe we did. Well, 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 we'll, we'll your point's well taken. We'll, we'll, we'll look at all the levels. I'm, I'm pretty sure a couple of years ago, I remember you and I working on it, that we, uh, in policy, we did establish a policy regarding the high school. And I think, you know, at the high school, we have so many alternative programs now, it, it works there. I mean, we have Edison Academy now for overage undercredited students, and uh, along with, uh, you know, Champion and B.B. Russell and Gateway to College, and we certainly have plenty of alternative programs. And uh, I, I guess my initial focus is, Tom, is in looking at establishing an alternative program for kids in the middle school level so that they're moved on. Um, you know, we um, you know, are facing a lot of challenges in the city. And in the, in the same day I dealt with that issue at that school, I dealt with a, uh, a shooting on the north side where the shooter was 16 years old. So, I mean, for us to think that 15 and 16-year-old kids belong in a school with six and eight and ten year old kids is just ludicrous. So anyhow, I, but your point's well taken, Mr. Mitchell. We can, I'll defer to the, I'm not a member of that committee, so I'll defer to that committee to, um, to well, take a good hard look at it's it. It's the whole committee, so technically you are. I thought the committees are the whole, you were the chairman and. Well, you, we welcome the mayor. You're, oh yeah, you know, I was going to say. I showed up at a subcommittee one time, I went to sit in the head seat, he said, no, 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 and he moved me right <laughs> out, so. <laughs> It's pretty clear that I'm not the chair of the subcommittee. It's only the big one. Yeah. One of the things that happened uh, just about a month ago, we got our policy uh, committee together to review, policy review committee together to review the policies of the Brockton Public Schools. So we've already begun. And one of the things we said at that first meeting was there were going to be some policies that were going to come before us and needed to be dealt with in a more immediate nature. This is obviously one of those policies. Uh, I met today with the executive team, uh, Deputy Superintendents Mike Thomas and Liz Barry are putting together already a task force to take a look at. That will include um, Executive Directors June Saba and Dr. Cliff Murray. We'll invite a number of principals in. And you're right, it isn't just about middle school. It's looking at we're a large urban district, 17,000 students. You know, children come to us with, with many needs. There's been transiency issues where children's uh, education has been interrupted. We have students that come from other countries that have not had, you know, formal uh, educational training, and we have to look again at overaged, undercredited, and as the mayor said, we have done an excellent job when you look at the high school. That issue came up a number of years ago, and we had created what was called Afternoon Academy, now uh, Edison Academy. So this is something we're taking very seriously. We would like to create probably procedures first and develop into policies that we can make sure our Parent Information Center is a resource to be able to follow to make decisions about those students that come in that are so-called red flagged for whatever reason that they are overaged for a particular level. So we will move forward on that and we will bring that to the Policy Review Committee and I'll report back to you. Yeah, and I, if I could add two specific requests, Superintendent. One is that when the Policy Committee looks at that, if the school committee could be provided with the data as to how many 15-year-old and up 8th grade students we have in the system. Is this 10 kids or is this 110 kids? I think, you know, the school committee would be interested to know that. And I think at the policy committee level, too, I'd, I'd also like to know the specific decision-making that went into placing that 16-and-a-half-year-old student in the 8th grade in a K-8 through school. So I think those are fair questions for us to explore. Yeah, we're certainly investigating that. Um, I do have some information. Um, I'm trying to look at it by school, as you said. Uh, when you look at some of our special needs youngsters that are, that are in our district up till age 22. So we, we try to take a look at the different levels and the number of years that they will spend at a middle school level, a high school level. So I've started to divide this information up to show you those students that are in substantially separate or life skills classes those students that are our um, English language learners and in our bilingual classes, our SEI classes, and those students that are regular ed students and really should be red flagged if they are overaged. One of the things that came up that is interesting in our district also as we register students, remember we do have those Burr babies. So when you look at those right now from September, December, September to December, you have 400 kindergartners that are the so-called Burr babies that we always talk about. As they age up, 
you think of a student going to Brockton High School, they could be 13 years old entering ninth grade, and the same as you look at all levels. So I think this is an opportunity to look at you know, all of those questions. I am just receiving this information. I have sat down, I've talked to uh, Soraya DeBarros today, I spent time with her. Um, I'm going to be having conversations with uh, Principal Carol McGrath and we'll take a look at, and it isn't just that situation, it's all our middle schools. The numbers are not extremely high, but there are some red flags that we need to, to take a look at and make sure children are placed appropriately. I appreciate that, and I think okay. that from the city side, and perhaps <coughs> Lieutenant Mills could participate with that policy committee too around the, uh, the issue of what the reporting system is when students are arrested for s significant crimes, particularly you know, felonies, crimes of violence, crimes with weapons, crimes with drugs, you know, how exactly are we getting that information directly to the school system and then who at the school system is getting it and what are they doing with it in terms of addressing the appropriateness of a placement of a student or if a student should be being removed from the mix based upon an arrest outside of school. So I think we need to look at all of that. Mr. Menchella. Information, uh, Mr. Mayor, and we will disseminate that in conjunction with um, scheduling of that meeting. Yeah, that's uh, great. So I know that's being done. So okay. Any other items to refer to subcommittees? The only other one is uh, the bid review committee. I believe the uh, warehouse. Mr. Thomas, what are you looking to do with that? You know, we have a little bit of an option on. Um, how we select it, but obviously it has to be done by the, by the committee, by the bid review, and then the, the full school committee. So I'd like um, to basically uh, schedule a meeting for um, sometime next week. It could be like around 5.30 before it gets dark because I think it's important to see both places in the daylight and then um, come together and, and make a decision on which one we sh should select as a, basically for, we put out for obviously a three-year lease. So um, I think it's important for the committee to see both places as we can make an informed decision on which one to select. Just make sure, Wanda, that uh, when you're setting that up, if all of the school committee members can be notified of the, the time and place, because I think that uh, that's one of probably a little more broad interests. It affects finance, affects facilities. I mean, there's a number of factors there to that decision. And obviously, we'll have to post it as a, as a meeting. Post it. Yeah. So, one, if you could work with everyone to, to get us a day sometime next week. And again, I'd ask, you know, I, if it could be 5.30, 6 o'clock, just, so, uh, just so we could see both places in the daylight, because it's important to see the, you know, the yards where the, the you know, with the, the um, parking lot and the area where, the, where all the facilities trucks will be parked. And so that's part of, also was part of the proposal. So, um, so I'd like to see it in the daylight if we could work something out with Wander. And then we could post it ahead of time, obviously. Yep. Okay. Is that good? All right. Any other items? Okay. Then we'll, uh, we'll move on to new business. Would any members like to be recognized under new business? Well, I'll, um, I'd like to uh, put something on the table here, just more for informational purposes, then I'll defer to Mr. Menicello. Um, but, you know, uh, we said goodbye to Mike tonight, and uh, unfortunately, I think we have to initiate the conversation as to um, uh, appointing a replacement to represent Ward 6 on the school committee. So, um, in terms of informing the public, the, um, the ordinance calls uh, when, in a situation like this, the ordinance calls for a joint convention to be called of the school committee and the city council sitting together as one body to elect a member to serve out the balance of the term. So I had a chance to have a conversation with Mr. Minichello a little bit earlier this evening and I'll, uh, I'll defer to Mr. Minichello as vice chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did have a conversation with uh, city council president Bob Sullivan and um, within the next two weeks, we are going to try to schedule a meeting. I'm going to speak to my colleagues on the school committee and see about availability. Um, we would uh, entertain anyone from the public that would be interested in applying to send in a letter of interest. There is no um, requirement 
that the person be from Ward 6, but I would think that Ward 6 um, um, residency would certainly be a major factor in our decision to elect someone since that is the ward that uh, would need representation. So um, we would um, have that uh, joint convention uh, as a post posted public meeting. I suggested uh, the auditorium at the high school since it has to house both the school committee and the city council. Um, Bob thought it was a good idea since you know it is a school committee member and um, um, we will um, you know unfortunately go on with the business that we have to um, with Mike's absence but um, the um, the process is is pretty clear the mayor uh, would serve as the chairman but um, my reading of the ordinance is that since he is a voting member of the school committee he would also be entitled to a vote so um, um, that's basically the process I will um, you know at some point probably tomorrow or the next day speak to everyone to see what our calendars look like I'll speak to Wander and the superintendent and see what has already been scheduled for us and make sure we don't pick those days um, but um, that's basically where we're at so I would invite again anyone from the public that's interested especially people from Ward 6 uh, to send in a letter of uh, interest. They could send it uh, attention school committee and forward it to um, 43 Crescent Street um, to our attention and um, then I will you know share copies with um, Council President Bob Sullivan. He may receive some and um, I'm sure he'll share them with us and then we'll all um, you know, have a chance to review them and um, make our decision. So. I, you know, I did, I'm glad you referenced it to remind me, Tom, uh, many people don't realize the mayor sitting as the chair is a full voting member of the school committee. Um, most mayors don't exercise the vote too often. Um, I did in my first meeting in January clearly state that I did intend to exercise my vote from time to time when I thought it was appropriate and I think this is one of the situations where um, I think it's very appropriate and I think that uh, We'll ask our colleagues on the city council to please to, when they cast their votes, to really give consideration to the, um, the requests of the members of the school committee who will be having this person join our board and work with us for the next uh, 22 months or so. So in any event, um, Mr. Minichello as vice chair will work with uh, Council President Sullivan, set the date and time. It'll be announced to the public well in advance. and. If anyone would like to be considered, um, I'm sure that uh, uh, any resident uh, would certainly be considered, but I would also echo Tom's sentiments. My personal, I have a very strong feeling that it should be a resident of Ward 6. Um, so, uh, although the ordinance does not require it, the ordinance does not require it. So, we will, um, hopefully Tom will have an announcement in the near future in terms of the, the timing of that meeting and in the interim, for those who are interested in being considered, uh, they should get their letter of interest uh, into us. Thank you, Tom. Any further questions or discussion on that matter? Okay. It's kind of a painful process. Okay. Go ahead. Three quick items. Sure. Um, Three. Just very quickly. Um, it's you 830, Superintendent. <laughs> you did recognize Representative Claire Cronin, who is in the audience tonight. Um, I do want to tell you that, again, in my first year as superintendent, Representative Cronin uh, has, has been very attentive to the needs of us as an ur urban district. She's filed uh, a number of bills, legislation that supports us as a school district. We sit often and talk about issues, and I know we have a voice on the Hill, and I thank her. And that being said, and thank all our legislative uh, representatives. And what we're trying to do is, again, come up with a legislative luncheon uh, to invite them here to our Fine Arts Cafe. I know we're trying to come up with some dates. And I was told, again, uh, that April 29th, I think, is Day on the Hill, where groups of school districts can, school committee members, superintendents, can come together to, to meet with our, our legislators. But we do want to have, uh, certainly, a luncheon here to talk about our issues. Mrs. Joyce. If I may, I'd just like to add something. I'd like to publicly thank Claire for the, the information she sends to us. I will occasionally, oh, quite often actually, get inform, information sent to 
from you to us on what's going on as far as, you know, different bills you're voting on and really keeping us informed as to what's going on at the state level. And I do appreciate that. And I wanted to let everybody know that you have really been a force for change for Brockton in particular. And it is appreciated that we have a voice up on, up on, on the, the uh, hill in, in our new representative. Thank you. I'll add to that, too. I represent Bozeman Great that you work with. And um, we're working together on a number of initiatives. Well, I mean, I had to wait to my turn to go. <laughs> um, uh, but one of the things I really love about the way Claire um, works as a state rep is her, her district only includes a portion of the city of Brockton, but she advocates for issues that affect all of the city of Brockton. So as, as the mayor, I'm truly appreciative of that. And, and uh, she's just been terrific for me to work with also. So thank you, Representative Cronin. And I'd also like to bring to your attention um, Maxine Richardson, Director of Community Schools, sent out the Albert Baron Sully uh, application. Those of you know, Albert Baron Sully was one of the founders of community education uh, in the Brockton Public Schools through community schools. And they're entertaining that uh, certainly in the community. If there is somebody that you want to nominate because of their volunteerism, giving back to our community, our school district, uh, please make sure that you contact Maxine and you'll be able to, to get one of the uh, applications. And last but not least, I see our uh, Director of Music, uh, Vinnie McLean, is sitting up there. And I do have to tell you, uh, we have a superintendent contract um, evaluation review scheduled for Tuesday, April 1st. You all just got tickets to certainly attend our big spring concert, which is being held the same night. So I think um, Wanda will talk to you either about different times or dates, so I think all of you certainly want to go to the spring <laughs> concert. So I, I would hope we could take a look and maybe come up with an alternative sure. date if, if that's okay. That's it. I'm just trying I didn't get my ticket, Superintendent. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean we got oh, tickets? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gave away. <laughs> Should I infer anything the from that? The tickets are coming, correct? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, tickets, are <laughs> tickets are in the mail. <laughs> tickets are in the Friday mail. Package. Yeah, okay. I'll get them around the end of next week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> are, are those all your sure. items? That's okay. It. Would anyone else like to be heard on a new business? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? This meeting is adjourned.